I have a very simple HTML, and this is static HTML. There's nothing, uh, there is no JavaScript here. Um, it's just HTML. Uh, I'm loading Angular. I'm loading to do JS, which will be used for my application, but right now it doesn't do anything. And the rest is just a static template with already data in it. Now, what I want to do is turn this into an Angular application. And the way I do it, uh, and notice that this HTML is served just with a static HTTP server, so there's nothing happening on the server side. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to say that this is an ng app, um, and I, I give it some name. And then um, and uh, Angular follows MVC. Sorry? Well, I'm just talking to. <laughs> okay, um, so um, Angular follows MVC. So we have a model, we have view, and we have controller. So we specify this chunk of DOM is going to be controlled by this particle controller. Now, if I go to ToDoJS, you'll see that I'm creating a module to do app, which is what I referenced in my ng app, and um, within within that module. I'm specifying a controller called app controller, and this is the constructor function for that controller. Now, the controller takes one argument, uh, scope, which you can think of as a con uh, context that is shared between the controller and the template. So whatever is available in, the, in this context uh, is going to be available in the template. And then in my template, I can do something like da -da -da. Okay, so I, I can use expressions. So I, I can use double curly, and I can say, take whatever the username is in the current context, uh, pipe it through an uh, uppercase filter, and uh, inline it in this place of document. Um, so what I get is Igor's to-do list, because username is set to Igor in my controller. Does that make sense? So you, you model, and the controller lives in the JavaScript. The template is just HTML, which is converted into DOM, and then Angular consumes the DOM. And, and brings the two uh, and makes it alive. So, and with the repeater, we have constructs like ng repeat, uh, which allow you to do something like uh, item in items, where items is an array. So, in my controller, I'm defining. I have a model called items. Uh, it's an array containing two objects. Um, each object has a text property and done property, and I'm going to publish on the scope. So I, I mentioned that scope is the context. So I'm just going to say within this context, uh, under name items, this is going to be available. And then in my template, and I actually want to repeat the li, not ul. So I want to say repeat. I'll remove this. Guys. Repeat this li um, as many times as I have items in the items array. Uh, preserve the current item in this uh, variable so that I can bind to it. So now I can do item.text. And that doesn't work. Text items. Oh. oh, sorry. I, this is on a here. li. Okay, that's more readable. So, perfect. So I, what I'm saying is that I have this li that I want to repeat over. So this li becomes a template, uh, and it's going to be cloned as many times as I have uh, elements in the array, and then I can data bind to this stuff. So I can do also item dot done. And now you see that the done is uh, true here and false here, but the checkbox doesn't reflect that. So I need to actually data bind the input box. What I can do is ng model um, item dot done. And now when I change the checkbox, 
it's going to update the model, which will update all the things that are bound to the same model. So th this is just very quick introduction to Angular. Um, there are many other pieces to Angular, like dependency injection. Dependency injection is how we structure the application and break it down into smaller components that can depend on each other. And the dependency injector will just resolve the dependencies between components and instantiate uh, everything in the right, in, at the right time, um, which helps you in um, making your application more maintainable as well as more testable. Because if the components are not instantiated by other components, if there is something else instantiated all these components, you can easily override what a component looks like in the context of a test. So you can say that in this particular test, I'm not going to be calling a server because I have a component that calls the server. You can just replace it with a fake component that has the same API but doesn't call the server. So that in your test, you can easily pretend that the code is making a request, but it's not really. And we also provide all these mocks for you. So uh, there are mocks for all these common services that are really hard to test with. Um, so that you can just train them. Um, in Ruby, you should be familiar with testing. So testing is a very big part of Angular. Um, Mishko is going to talk today about directives. And directives is API that allows you to extend the HTML compiler. So I noticed that uh, I mentioned that we have this ng-repeat, we have ng-model, we have many other things that we call directives. And um, this is something that was built on top of API that is available to you. Uh, so not only you can use our directives, you can build your own. And this is how we think that you can actually take um, small pieces uh, of, of Angular uh, and uh, create components that are specific to your application. Um, and extend uh, everything. Basically, everything in Angular is extensible. Uh, if it's a templating language or if it's all the services that we provide, everything has extension points so that you can extend uh, things. And there is uh, Dean. Where's Dean? <laughs> Dean. So he he's working on an Angular UI project, uh, which aims to create uh, components for Angular, so that if you need a date picker, you just go to Dean, and Dean will give you a nice date picker. Uh, if he doesn't deliver on the promise, then you can beat him. <laughs> um, so uh, our, our goal is to keep the core of Angular very small, but make it extensible so that other people can build on top of Angular and add components that are usable in particular, specific, uh, particular um, cases. But we don't want the Angular to be a beast with thousands and thousands of APIs. Okay. So um, I recommend that you go to our website. Um, there are many examples on the website which you can check out. And there are some screencasts which explain how we build these examples. Um, our documentation is interesting. Many people say they love it. Many people say that it needs a lot of work. I think both are true. Um, but um, there are many examples that you can learn from. We have really good tutorial. Um, if you go to docs.angularjs.org slash tutorial, um, you can go through building uh, of an application, uh, which will show you everything you need to know and how we test and how we run tests. Um, there is build with AngularJS, um, which is a gallery of applications that were already built. Many of them have a link to source code, so you can check out um, these applications. And uh, that's about